Welcome to this lesson on big data concepts. In this lesson, we'll be understanding some of the core Hadoop principles like scalability, economical and reliable, but through a story. We need to understand that Hadoop is an open source framework and a fault tolerant system. But keeping all these terms and bullet points in mind may be challenging. So we have devised a simple unique story for you to remember as well as retain for a long period of time the Hadoop score principles. So let's get started. Here is a story about a passionate teacher. She loves to teach her small classroom of six students. Every week she gives teaches them a topic and on Friday she takes them an exam. She collects the answer paper and takes it home for correction on the weekend. It takes her around 10 to 20 minutes to get those answer paper corrected. Life is going good. But soon what happens, the popularity of her class starts increasing. So instead of six students, she now has hundreds of students to thousands of students coming through online as well. And now what happens in the weekend, instead of just taking 20 to 30 minutes to get the answer papers corrected, it's taking her hours and sometimes the whole day. This is a concern for her. But she loves to teach and that's why starts thinking about how to come up with a solution. Finally, comes, she comes with a genius solution. And this is something you may have seen in your classroom or your kid's classroom. She was burdened with the task of grading all the students and all the answer papers. Next week, what she does, on Friday she says, I'm not going to collect the answer papers. Instead, I'm going to put the answers on the whiteboard and the students are going to self-correct that. Using this method, all the answer papers get corrected in 10 minutes. She has resolved the scalability issue with this genius solution. But unknowingly, she has used several of the Hadoop principles to really make this happen. There is a lot of similarity in this classroom with what happens in a real-time Hadoop cluster. So let's try to understand that. So we'll go through these core Hadoop principles one after the other. First, we'll explain what happens in the classroom and then in a Hadoop's environment and understand these five Hadoop core principles. First principle, parallel execution. In the classroom in scenario one, the teacher was collecting correcting all these papers one after the other, which is called a serial execution. In scenario two, she allowed the kids to correct their own papers, making it possible for all the papers to be simultaneously corrected. And that is what is called as parallel execution. This is a secret sauce in Hadoop. In a Hadoop environment, there is something called as a cluster, which has a master node similar to the teacher in the classroom. And there are several different smaller slave nodes available which do this actual task. Let's say we have an example. We want to calculate the richest person in United States. The data of individual states might be stored in these digital nodes. And each node will start executing their own richest person's data, allowing us to have happen all this action in parallel, making a much better performance. So you see the similarity between the classroom and Hadoop, which is having parallel execution. The second principle is data locality. In the classroom, in scenario one, the teacher is collecting all the answer papers on every Friday, but that act of collecting all these papers, taking it home is not producing any valuable output. In a scenario two, when the kids are self-correcting the papers, the data is not moving somewhere else. The answer papers are sitting with the kids itself and getting it corrected much faster. Similarly, in a Hadoop environment, moving huge amount of data from one node to another is much of a IO bottleneck. Hence, Hadoop has turned this problem of data movement on its head and resolved it by something called as a principle called data locality. Data locality means 
processing the data where it resides. So in a previous example, if a data of California was stored in one particular node, it would not be moved to another node. Instead, and that node would just produce the results for California so richest person. So each node will perform the exit processing on their own data and finally some of the results. There are situations where there are exceptions to data locality which can be talked in advanced topics. But having data locality is one of the other core and useful principles in Hadoop. The third principle we want to talk about is fault tolerance. In the classroom, let's say in scenario one, the teacher is absent, the whole act of collecting the papers would come into a stall. But in scenario two, if there is somebody else who can put the answers on the whiteboard, the concept corrections could happen by the kids by themselves and the system would continue by itself. Similarly, in Hadoop, tries to address this fault tolerance by a mechanism called as replication. Hadoop keeps each every single data file as three copies. It keeps backup copies of each file if you want to think two copies of that. So overall there are three copies of the file. So suppose one node goes down, there are other nodes which have the same set of data allowing us to continue the processing of that data. This makes the overall system fault tolerance while individual nodes may go down. The fourth principle is scalable and you may have understood by now the solution which the teacher came up in the classroom is quite scalable. She is not concerned about the classroom number of students going from 50 to 100 or even thousands. Similarly, in a Hadoop cluster, you can increase the processing power of your cluster by merely increasing the number of slave nodes and this is called as horizontal scalability. You can horizontally keep on adding slave nodes and improving the performance of your node. The last principle is economical. How does this solution of a Hadoop cluster become economical? Having this mechanism of several slave nodes, which are actually called as commodity hardware or cheaper hardware, helps us to really save cost. The server or the master node needs to be a high-end expensive hardware but there could be a lot of cost savings accumulated with these thousands of several slave nodes. So thus making it similar to the classroom, these are the five principles, the fundamental core principles of Hadoop which you see through this story. Hope you like it and you remember this classroom whenever you want to think about Hadoop principles.